So the last thing we want to do is add a database to our app. This is so anytime someone comes in and signs the guest book, their name and their comment will be saved to the database. So anytime anyone comes to the guest book homepage, they'll see all the previous uh, comments from other people. Right now, it doesn't actually save anything. It just shows it once. So to do this, the first thing we'll need is an actual database. So I went to freemysqlhosting.net and they give you a free database up to five megabytes. Uh, not much room to work with if you were actually creating a production app, but for testing purposes, it works well. And I think uh, having your test database on a remote server works a lot better because I find that installing a database locally on your machine can be finicky and it doesn't always work as well as it should. So I think if you uh, host it somewhere else, you'll avoid a lot of headaches. So I've already created a database with uh, free MySQL hosting. So just find a place where you can host a database. Um, if you don't have a place at all, just go to freemysqlhosting.net. If for some reason the site isn't up, just Google for free MySQL hosting or free whatever database that you prefer if you have a particular preference. The next thing we need to do is install Flask SQL Alchemy. So I'll exit out of the program momentarily and I'll install it. So pip install flask dash dash SQL alchemy. And this is going to allow us to actually interact with the database. So it should only take a moment to install and it's the first Flask extension that we're going to use. Flask allows you to have many extensions to do various things. Um, in our case, in this tutorial, we're only going to focus on connecting to the database, but uh, there are many other extensions. So just search for those and you can see other things you can do with Flask that aren't in there natively. So it's downloading and it's installing. And as soon as it's done, uh, we're going to start writing some code to handle this. And I'm going to assume it installs correctly. So the first thing I need to do is actually import from SQL Alchemy. So I'll import on a new line. I'll say from flask underscore SQL Alchemy import SQL Alchemy. So capital S and capital A. So capital S, capital Q, capital L, capital A. So this is going to actually instantiate our database object. So let's see if uh, everything is done. It is. So now let me hold off on actually running the application again before we can actually do something. So working with a database can be pretty complicated. So I'm going to gloss over a lot of things here. I'm only going to go over the bare minimum to get the data saved. But of course, there's so much more you can learn about databases. So after you have the um, SQL Alchemy object imported, or the SQL Alchemy class imported, the next thing you want to do is add a couple of things to your configuration. So below app here, I'm going to uh, add two uh, configuration values. And to add configuration values, you can do it many ways, but in this way, I'm going to do the simplest, which is just keep it in the same file. Typically, you'd have the configuration outside the main file, but uh, for this demonstration, I'm just going to keep everything in the same file. So to add configuration values, you do app.config and then the name of the configuration key. So in this case, um, I'm going to use two. The first is going to be SQL Alchemy underscore database URI, and I'll fill that in in a moment. And the second one is going to be SQL Alchemy track modifications. And I'm going to set this to false. Um, this is just to avoid a warning message in our console every time something happens with the database. I'm not going to get into what exactly it's doing, but basically it's trying to tell you something every time um, something changes in the database, but we don't need to know that for our purposes. But this database URI is important. So what this is, is a way to uh, tell SQL Alchemy how to connect to our database. So in the Flask documentation here for SQL Alchemy, Flask SQL Alchemy, uh, there's these different connection URIs. So like for Postgres, we have PostgreSQL and then colon slash slash username, password, a location of the database, and then the name of the database. And it's something similar for MySQL, Oracle, and SQLite. Since I'm using MySQL, I need the MySQL connection string. So I'll go ahead and copy that and I'll paste it in here as the configuration value. And I'll set up um, this URI string with the values from my 
database that I created. So I have them copied somewhere. So let me just add them. So my username is this. My password is this. And then the location is here. The name of my database is the same as my username. And that's it. So that should be enough to connect to my database. So I'll save that. And now after I have the configuration values, I need to instantiate the database object. So I'll call this DB by convention. And then it takes in the SQL Alchemy class. And you pass in the Flask app. So this way it can actually interface with the Flask app itself. So now what I want to do is create a model. And a model in SQL Alchemy represents a table in the database. So this is an object relational uh, mapper. So um, any class in Python will be mapped to a table in the database. So I'm going to create one table in the database. And this table is going to hold the name and the comment for each guest book signature. So let's create that. And like I said, I'm just going to gloss over everything. But since the example is going to be so small, you may be able to figure out some things on your own. So I'll call this table comments. So what SQL Alchemy is going to do is take the name of the table or the name of the class and make it the name of the table. I can actually change the name of the table to be anything I want, but by default, it takes the name of the class and converts it to um, the table name of the database, which we'll see in a moment. So anyway, uh, I have this comments and I'm inheriting db.model and I would just add some functionality to our class to actually allow us to use it for um, interacting with the database and I'm going to create uh, three columns by doing this so I'm going to create an ID column and what I'm doing here is I'm creating a primary key so anytime you're working with the database it's nice to have a primary key because that is a unique representation of the row in a sense each row so um, this is a unique number and no two rows will ever have the same ID. So uh, in SQL Alchemy is required and an actual database is not required, but it makes things so much simpler. So that column we're not going to actually deal with directly, but the columns that we are going to deal with are name column. So db.column, db integer. Actually, this is a, a db string. And let's say the name could be up to 20 characters. And then a comment is going to be a column. And this is a string as well, but let's say it can be up to a thousand characters. So that's it for my table that I'm going to create in the database. So SQL Alchemy is going to look at this and kind of translate it to a table. So to do this, we'll have to start with a Python REPL. So in here, I'll type Python. And then from guestbook, I'm going to import DB. And by doing db.createAll, Flask SQL Alchemy will look for all the tables in my code. So look for all the classes that I have defined and compare them to the tables in the database. And if a table from the code doesn't match up with a table from the database, then it will create that table in the database. So I'll run this command. It should only take a moment and it's done. And to actually see what happened here, let me open up uh, phpMyAdmin. So it really helps if you have a visual uh, database tool. So let me just log in here into here quickly. And then once I'm inside, I can see the database that I have in the table that I just created. So this is the database name. And the table that I just created is called comments. And we see on the left-hand side that it exists. And when I open it, there's nothing there. But I do see the structure of it. I can see the ID, the name, and the comment columns. And the sizes are correct, 20 and 1,000. So now let's get to actually adding data into the database every time the user does something. And to add things into the database is actually pretty simple. All I have to do is instantiate an object using this comments class that I created. And by supplying the name and the comment when I instantiate that object, that's basically like creating a row. And I just have to add it and commit it to the database. So I'll do it here in the process route. So I'll name this object signature. 
and it's going to be from the comments class. The name is going to be equal to the name that's passed in, and the comment will be equal to the comment. And then I have to add it, so I'll do db session add signature, and then db session dot commit, and this will save everything. So a little bit of SQL Alchemy magic going on here, but just know that by instantiating the object here, I'm basically creating a row. I'm adding this row to the database, and by committing it, I'm actually saving the changes. So let me save this and run it. So I'll exit out of Python and run the guestbook application. And then I'll sign the guestbook. So I'll sign. This is the very first comment. So I'll sign it. And it returns this, but it should have also committed this to the database as well. So if I go to my database and I refresh the comments table, I now see that there is one row in the table. It has an ID of one, the name is Anthony, and the comment is the very first comment. So that's exactly what I want. So I can add as many comments as I want. Here is another comment. And I'll refresh one more time. And now I see that there are two rows in the database and uh, I have the second comment there. So now that I have these two comments in the database, I actually want to display them on my guestbook. So on the home page, I have uh, this section here where it has this name and this comment. Well, what I want to do is supply a list of comments, and I want to loop over that list showing every single comment in the database. So let's make some minor changes to the index to support that. So the first thing that we have to do is actually get the list of data that we want. So to do that, we're going to query the database now. Instead of sending information into the database, we're actually getting data out of the database. So to do this, I'll be using SQL Alchemy again. And I'll say uh, I want all of the results to go in a variable called results. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the comments class, so comments. I'm going to execute a query against it. And then I want to return all the results in the comments table. So you can filter this uh, more like you can do a typical database query. So give me all the comments where the name is Anthony or give me all the comments where the ID is greater than 10, something like that. But for our purposes, I only want everything in the table. So by having this result here, I'm going to get a list in return. And this list is going to be a list of SQL Alchemy objects. And with these SQL Alchemy objects, I can basically take a look at the columns for each row. So this will make a little more sense once I actually uh, modify the template code. So I'll pass in this result, and I'll just use the same variable as the parameter. So I'm passing in the result. And then in the, in the index file, what I want to do is I want to say for r in results. So I pass in the result here. So for r in results, I want to loop over this. And I'll just add in four down here. And what I want to do is since each R is going to be a SQL Alchemy object, uh, I have the name column and the comment column. So all I have to do is add R dot and R dot. And that will get me the data from each row as they exist. So if I just save that, save this here and make sure that the server restarted, it did. I can now go to the guest book and when I go to the home page, I should see things a little differently. So now that it's loaded, I see that there are two comments here. And these are the comments that I put in a couple of minutes ago. So these are actually saved in the database. So if I add a third comment, and let's say Stacy, here is a comment from Stacy. And I sign. For now, it's trying to go back to the original version that I had, but it doesn't work, so I'll skip over that for now. But if I go back to the index, I see that Stacy's comment is now uh, on the home page. 
So really the last thing that I have to do is modify the process to work better. Instead of returning the index template here, what I'm going to do instead is going to redirect to the index. So I need to import just two more things. I'll import redirect and I'll import URL for. So what I want to do here is instead of returning a view or a, a template, I want to return uh, a redirect so it sends the user back to the index. So I'll do redirect here and I need to supply URL four, which is similar to the URL four in the templates. And I just give it index. And by doing this, every time they submit something, uh, they will be redirected to the index and they'll be able to immediately see what they added. So I'll save that server restart it. So now let's take one more look at this. And I'll say, will the comment should redirect sign. And now it redirects me immediately to the home page. And now I see that I have Will's comment down there along with the other three comments. So it was that simple to integrate a database into our application. Like I said, even though there's a lot of um, things that I didn't explain with Flask SQL Alchemy, it's pretty straightforward once you learn it. Um, basically, you're just declaring classes to represent tables in the database, and then you can run queries from those classes, and you can uh, create objects and enter into the database, thus creating rows. So that's basically it for the code and the functionality for this guestbook application. In the next video, I'll just have a wrap up on what some what are some things you can change and um, maybe a direction you can go with this app if you choose to do so.